the following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Very happy to have you here on a special Saturday edition where we are going to talk all fighting. Uh, I was going to say UFC, but we're going to talk a little bit first, talking a little boxing, uh, getting into that. We're just going to talk all combat sports and get into it because we've got a big one coming up this weekend. Sugar Sean against Cheeto Vera. Number two it is a, a revenge for Sugar Sean. Extremely excited for this fight. I've been just completely pumped all week rewatching stuff and, and watching all of the documentary stuff that they put together because this is going to be a really fun fight, guys. Uh, and if you're into UFC at all, this is absolutely a an entire card that you want to tune into because it is stacked. And we're going to get into it. But before we do, let me first bring in my co-host. I've got Blake Lane, the man from Mobile, Alabama. Blake, how you doing this fine Saturday morning? I'm doing great, Josh. Just had a great cup of coffee and getting ready for the 299 card. A lot of excitement. I think this card is absolutely stacked. This, like we were talking right before we hit record, that this could actually be the 300 card. Uh, it's so, so just stacked and set up so nicely. Uh, every fight just looks like an absolute banger so hopefully it doesn't let us down uh it shouldn't because uh i think there's going to be some haymakers being thrown tonight and uh, there's going to be some excitement yeah absolutely i mean there's so many fights too where the way that it's all built up it just leads to so much fun and we'll, we'll get into some of them but man there's there's a lot uh yeah i mean 300 looks like chump change when when we when we compare it to, to 299 just I, I guess as as uh, uh, Jeremy would love to say, it looks like booty cheeks. Um, but <laughs> uh, let's let's first start off before getting to UFC 299. I want to first talk, go into the boxing world because some big news broke out. There was a lot of speculation that this would happen, but it finally broke out that uh, we're going to see Mike Tyson return to the boxing ring. You heard that right. The how old is he now? Fifty seven years yeah. old or something like that. The the fifty some year old Mike Tyson, the dude that we all know for being a legend, and uh, who was it? He bit bit somebody's ear off. Evander Holyfield. Uh, yes, Holyfield. Yes. Uh, so I mean, just Mike Tyson coming back, and he's going to be going against Jake Paul. My first reaction. So this is going to be on July twenty twentieth at AT and T Stadium, which is crazy. That's you know a huge venue, um, but it's going to be there and it's going to be live on Netflix. So again, July twentieth. My first reaction was, this is fake, right? But then I'm seeing it all over on ESPN and on, you know, Fox is, is advertising it. And then there's real advertisements coming from like Netflix and stuff. Man, there's yeah. re serious advertisement for this. And they've got a date and everything. They've got a promo video. I'm pumped because it, it, as much as you want to talk about how it's going to be rigged, it's going to be just set up. I don't care because you're seeing a legend Go against a, a dude that he, 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 we've talked about the Paul brothers in the past. You, you don't have to like them because I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't really like him, but he's he's a good boxer. I don't I wouldn't say he's professional level because the professional uh, fighters that he's fought against the one he, he lost to. Yeah, but he's a very good boxer. So you know him building up his brand the way the the, the way that he did. Uh, you know, we've 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 given him his flowers on this show before, and and I'm I'm going to give it to him again because he's he's so good uh, at, at what he does, getting mm -hmm. getting a crowd drawn in. And I absolutely want to see this fight. I, I think this is so fun, uh, regardless of how Wait, hard they fight. Even if it is a uh, uh, who was it? It was Logan Paul against um, Floyd. Yeah, it was against Floyd, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I mean, just. It, it, even if it is another fight like that, just boring, nobody's actually swinging hard. <laughs> it's awesome that we're getting the legend against a new up-and-coming uh, legend of his own. He may not be a legend in the sport of boxing, but he's still a legend of his own uh, in, in what he's doing. So, uh, I mean, Blake, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped for this fight. I think, I think it's pretty cool, uh, regardless of all the hate that it's getting. I like it. I, I, th I think it's good for the sport, uh, a sport that we're trying to bring back. And get excited about once again. And it, whatever whatever you got to say about Jake Paul or however you feel about him, he is trying to get boxing back to that level where UFC come in and took the steam away from it. But he's trying to bring it back. And I think you got to applaud him for that, for at least trying. And 
you know, who cares if he doesn't fight real boxers or whatever? He He's trying to bring the heat back into the sport. And so what better way to, than to fight one of the greatest of all time, right? Like you're fighting, you're fighting Mike Tyson, baby. Like <laughs> that's one of the, the, the all time greats. So yeah, he's 57 years old. Is it set up or whatever? I don't know. Is it for pure entertainment? Yes. Like we all know that. Uh, is Mike Tyson going to knock Jake Paul out? I don't know. Is Jake Paul going to knock Mike Tyson out? I don't know. Uh, is it going to be really fun to watch? I think so. I think I'm going to have a blast, you know, like I think it's just going to be really cool. And, uh, you know, just looking at Mike Tyson, him at his age and still being able to do this. First off, that's incredible. I'm going to have a blast watching that, uh, that you're almost 60 years old and you're still able to get in the ring and go a couple rounds with, with a guy that's, you know, 30 years younger than you. Um, I think that's, I think that's awesome, you know, and, and Jake Paul gets to, you know, jump in the ring with a, with a legend in boxing. And look, he's done that. He come from the Disney channel. He, he built his brand. And I know a lot of people don't like him because of that. Josh is he built his brand off of the Disney channel and onto YouTube and making little videos with his brother and everything. I get it. A lot of people don't like it because he found fame that way. But one thing I can't knock him of is his work ethic. I can't knock him for training every day, going to the gym every day, and doing what he does. Like you said, is he a professional? No, I don't think he is. But is he is he continuing to get good at boxing, get great at boxing? Yeah, he's working every day, Josh. Yeah, and, and and the way you put it too, I think it, it it goes well. By the way, I did look up Mike's age. He is fifty seven, so I got that right. Um, but you know, the, the, I think the way you said it was pretty well because he's not so. Stop looking at this as a professional boxing match. Anytime that you see uh, Jake Paul get in in the ring, because I don't, you don't see him striving to to join a boxing league of of any sort. He's he's not really into that. And and honestly, I think I think if you were to ask him. He's he's not going for that. He's an entertainer. Yeah. He's yep. an entertainer, and he's tr- he, like you said, he's trying to bring back uh, a a passion for the sport by entertaining. It doesn't matter how he w- he's going to do it. He just wants to do it, yep. uh, and and he wants to entertain. And that's that's really all his brand has ever been built up to be is an entertainment brand. Uh, that's and, it. and so Jake Paul is an entertainer, uh, and, and guess what. It's going to be a stacked. Uh, area. I guess it's going to be loaded with with viewers. Uh, you know, you're going to have that 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 house down there, and, and Jerry's world is packed full. Uh, and you're going to also have a bunch of people tuning in on on Netflix, or even if they yeah. have to pirate it uh, somehow, they're going to find a way to watch it because it's going to be a, a very fun, entertaining match. Uh, and, yep. and so, regardless of why they're doing it. Uh, you know, whether they're watching it for Mike Tyson, uh, rooting for Mike Tyson, rooting for Jake Paul, watching it because Jake Paul's on there, or or, or even if they're just a, a boxing fan, they're going to watch it, and it's going to draw in a, a big, big audience. Uh, and I, I can guarantee that much uh, because this dude knows how to market. He knows how to build up and, and bring an audience in. So, I mean, stop stop looking at it as a professional boxing match when he steps in the ring and, and look at it more as, as an entertainer stepping in there and trying to build something, like you said, you know, build, building the brand of boxing the way that he built his brand. Yep. I, but, I agree. I agree, dude. Like, it, it you know, it kind of gets at me, too, is like when people get on social media and they're like, oh, that Jake Paul guy, he's a clown. He's a clown, you know? And I'm like, hey, bro, Jake Paul would knock you out, okay? Yeah. Like, j- just, I know little Ricky over here, he's five six, 135 pounds, and he's over here on social media saying that Jake Paul is a clown and everything. Bro, he works. He's one of the hardest working people. All you see is a TikTok, a 30-second TikTok, dog. That's it. All right? You don't see him going into the gym every day and training and do, you know just constantly trying to get better. That is why I give him his flowers is because the work ethic. Like, he, he built it, you know, and, and I can't knock a guy for that. And he gives you a laugh sometimes, like yeah. him, 
him knocking out Nate Robinson was absolutely hilarious, dog. Like, there's no way I'm going to sit here and be like, oh, that was rigged or whatever. No, I was laughing the entire time. I was like, bro, he knocked him smooth out, face planted. Like, it's hilarious, you know? Yeah, I mean, have some fun with it. Yeah, and, and, and you, you bring up a good point with that, too, because it's like, it, I, I think without doing this, what, what we're doing here with this podcast, I, I don't think I recognize as as much work that he puts into it after doing yep. this. You know, you, you yep. put something. So like what, what people are seeing here, we're going to have what a 20, 30 minute episode uh, and it's just 30 minutes of us talking. No, we, you know, you you have all kinds of behind the scenes work that goes into it. Uh, the stuff that he's doing is way more work than even what we're doing. So, I mean, just, yeah, 100 percent hats off to him. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be entertained. I'm, I'm going to be pumped for it. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to watch it. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Uh, if you do, then tune in. Uh, yeah. I think it'll be a good time. So if you're into combat sports at all, check it out. Uh, I, I think it'll be a fun time, but let's jump over to the UFC 299 going on tonight. Like I said, Cheeto Vera trying to secure a victory against Sean O'Malley to prove that he truly beat him. Uh, and, and we'll get to that matchup, and we're going to talk about that matchup last. But first, I want to start off with maybe the prelims uh, and, and even some of the other main card fights and dive into some of them that we really enjoy because, like we said, totally stacked. Uh, a lot of really fun matches, uh, you know, and, and seeing everything that they put into this one. Um, I, I heard, I don't remember where it was, I heard... Dana, I, it might have actually been the press conferences that where I heard Dana, uh, at, he was asked how hard it was to line this up and then try to plan 300 because it's just, man, like 300 was supposed to be the event that got us all pumped up. Like, oh my gosh, you're going to bring in th this guy and this guy. And 300 is a bunch of main, main card events, but not a bunch of main events. Yeah. Uh, you know, you would, you would expect like, five or six main event kind of feeling fights and you just don't get that out of it you get that out of this one this one has so many you're going to have uh the bmf title uh going on and then you're going to have uh, an, another really good one uh going on right after that uh, I, I believe uh, I, I can't remember exactly no no the bmf is is 300 right yeah, I think I so. Yeah, next up. that's that's three hundred. So I was I was just looking at the lineup. I was like, wait a second, that's not even in this one. So yeah, that that one's uh, three hundred. So good job to that one. Uh, they got Gaethje and Holloway going for that one and three hundred. But let's get to two two ninety nine. Uh, outside of the the main event, what's what's your 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 biggest fight that you're looking at here on the on the card? I really just want to see if Peter Yan can get back on track. Uh, he's been on a three fight skid, I believe, and yeah. Uh, kind, one of those kind of was a out of, kind of jipped out of, I think, two of them that I can remember, man. It just felt wrong. I felt like the Sean fight uh, could have – I felt like that one could have went his way. Yeah, I forgot about Sean's fight. That that was one, too. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say two of the last three that he fought in, I feel like, man, I just – or at least two of, the, two of the last losses, I can recall. I, and and I, I know – I remember Sean was just kind of like, man, like, I don't know. Sean didn't do enough to – say that he won it like, it left you feeling that way right yeah yeah it was, it was even more questionable than the duplessy strickland fight because at least that one like hey you tagged the dude up at least but yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm on there i'm on board with you yeah i, I just want to see if P, if uh peter yon can get back on track because uh you know it, if you lose four in a row and uh the direction that he's headed and the guy that he's facing uh, is in a completely different direction. I think he's won two in a row, three in a row, something like that. Uh, so, you know, you, you start slipping down that board, that bantamweight board a little bit, and uh, I just don't know if he would ever get back up there to compete again for, a, a you know, maybe another title shot or something like that. But I think he's number four uh, in the rankings right now, so – you can't lose this one, so that's what I'm most interested in seeing. Is a, you know, I think he's one of the he's one of the the greats to me. I've always had fun watching him. He always performs well. He puts on a show, uh, very entertaining, and that's what I want to see. When I see a guy get in the octagon, Josh, I I want to see you go in there and put on a show. If you lose, I'm okay with that. I just want to see you go in and give me something that gets me up off the couch. 
Mm-hmm. Just like the Sean fight. I, I mean, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, oh, you know, like that's what I want to see. If you go down, like Cody Garbrandt, I love watching Cody Garbrandt fight, bro. Even though he's got a glass chin, all right? I love watching him fight because I know he's going in and he is going to be one of the best entertainers that you've ever seen step in that octagon. He's going in to put on a show for everybody in that audience and everybody on that pay-per-view, period. And uh, that's one thing about about Peter Yan that I can always say is he goes in to put on a show, and that's why I respect the hell out of him. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That, that's a really good fight to bring up, too, because... I think whenever you look at Peter Yan and then uh, Song Yudong and, and looking at their fighting styles, so so different that it's it's gonna it's it's bound to be a fun match um, because you know like Song Yudong he's just so energetic like yeah. I don't I don't know if the dude ever has like it, it, if if he ever reaches E on his gas tank I've never seen him get to that <laughs> yeah. point you know he's just like always flipping around and you know like super wiry and everything but just. He's he's a lot of fun to watch. So I I think just the total different styles is is what leads me into that fight for sure. And um, and Jan's the favorite, the slight favorite. So that's yeah, yeah he is. Uh, and yeah, because uh, I, well, I guess it just changed on me right as I was looking at it too. Um, it it went up to where uh, he he was a little bit more of. Uh, I'm not sure how that changes. So if Peter Jan stayed at minus one thirty. Um, but then Song Yudong went from plus one thirty to plus one ten. Like it just switched like right as I was looking at it. So kind of kind of crazy on on the movement there. But I, I would, I mean, I'll be rooting for Peter Peter Yan. I I would kind of want to put my money on that plus over there for Song Yudong. I mean, it just yeah. it just feels that way. Feels I'm that way to me. I'm with you, especially when I heard it go to one ten. Yeah, this might be. This might be a tough night for old for old Peter Yan. Yeah, man. Well, I I guess one that uh, one that really catches my eye before we go to pay per view, so you don't even really have to pay any extra to get this one. Is the the women's flyweight? We've got Macy Barber uh, against Caitlin. Uh, I'm gonna butcher her last name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sermonera. I, th- I think it's Sermonera. Uh But Macy Barber, just because so. We went back and watched UFC last night. We were, we, you know, hanging out with the family and everything. Watched mm-hmm. uh, UFC 246. Threw it on the TV just to kind of watch because I was. If you if you haven't seen UFC 246, that's Cowboy Cerrone against mm-hmm. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor's return. There was so much hype for that card. That that card was almost as stacked as this one. Mm-hmm. So fun to watch uh, the entire card from early prelims to prelims, all the way through the main card. Uh, so much fun to watch, uh, and Macy Barber earned my respect there in 246 because of what she did. And I'm drawing a blank on who she fought against, but it was just crazy to me. So she goes out there; they're they're both battling it out, a, a super even match, the entire match, mm-hmm. all the way through. And I believe it was first first round or early second round. She ends up tearing her ACL, and I think there was another, uh, it, 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 and it was either another ligament or muscle something that she tore. And so she had several things wrong with, I, I think it was her left or her right. I'm, I'm thinking it was her left leg. And she finished the fight. She, she even had a doctor come and look at her uh, in between rounds. Mm-hmm. And she was basically shaking the doctor off. I'm fine. I'm fine. See, I'm moving it. I'm standing on it. I'm fine. Fights through the entire round. And, like, the thing is, she wasn't going down without a fight. She was still on top a lot of the times whenever they went to the ground. You could tell she couldn't put any weight on that leg. Uh, Macy Barber, so much fun to watch. And she gained so much respect for me there in 246. And she's had a lot of really good fights. Uh, people like to, to bash the women's fights. No. Nah. I totally get it. I totally get it. I, I, I have a, a hard time watching women fight. It's like, man, this just feels wrong. It feels wrong, and it's just because of, because of my moral values. Yeah. But sometimes those women are so much fun. Raquel Pennington, uh, man, I, I like love watching Rocky. Uh, back whenever uh, uh, Ronda Rousey was still in it, Gina Carano was still in it. Those are some good women to watch. Uh, Macy Barber's one of them, man. I, I absolutely love uh, Holly Holm, too. Uh, yeah. Another, another fun one to watch. So, Man, I mean, and there he is. So many times. Where it, it it does feel wrong, but I, I just I love watching the women fight, bro. I tell you, uh, I've I've kind of you know 
heard people, you know, say, oh, the women fighting and everything. Um, I get it. You know, I get it. I 100% get it. But those fights are bangers, bro. Like absolute bangers. They get in there to put on a show. They get in there to let the world see, like, hey, we got hands too. All right. We can, we can throw too. So, uh, don't disrespect us. And I love it. Like, those are some of the best fights on the card. And I didn't realize either, too. Like, Macy Barber's only lost two fights. She's 13 and two. Yeah. I, I haven't seen her fight in a while. Uh, because it took her a while to get back after that one in 246. And then she came, chink, she came back, uh, later on. But man, yeah, it's it's been a while. But I I don't realize her her record was that good. Yeah, you, you're right. You're right, though. I mean, that sometimes they come in there. I think it's just because they know people people don't want to watch us fight. We're gonna change that. Yeah. I mean, you you just see such a different mentality going into it for the women, where the men are more strategic. They're gonna sit there and just try to win. Women just go in there and just beat the crap out of each other. They do. They do. It's fun to watch, man. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. I guess another one I want to bring up. I guess this one would be on the pay per view, uh, which is crazy um, because if I remember correctly, it's his UFC debut. Um, it's Michael Venom Page. Rem- remember the name? Uh, he's he's gone viral previous to coming into the UFC, uh, and he's 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 a pretty big name. And so I'm, I'm shocked that he gets this main card because it's his debut. That's that's crazy to me that that Dana would do this, but. Puts him on the on the main card, uh, Michael Page. He's going to be a lot of a lot of fun. They they call him MVP, uh, and and so he's he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think he's a really good fighter. He grew up fighting. He grew up in the world of fighting, uh, and he's going against Kevin Holland, who is another really fun fighter to watch. I, I I wanted to put money on this, and I was I was sitting there trying to figure out how how I'm going to do this. Yeah, and I couldn't decide. I, I just I, I I have such a hard time because they're both very similar styles. They're both very fun. They they both put on a show no matter how they fight, whether they're they they won or lost. They both put on an extremely good show. So I I, I had a really hard time with this one, but uh, I, I know you brought this one up too before we started recording. But which which fights you were looking into? Uh, Kevin Holland, a lot of fun to watch, but MVP on his. Uh, like I said, don't don't don't. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's his debut. What is Michael Page like on the ground? It, I don't does know he if have? I've seen him. I don't know if I've seen okay. him on the ground too much. Uh, I, I mean, I know I know Kevin Holland's good on the ground. Like like, yeah. dude is just all over the octagon. Man. There's he there's is, a uh, fight with MVP with with Michael Page where. He has this crazy like spin kick to the head, and then he just looks out to the crowd and acts like nothing happened. And the dude's still standing. All of a sudden, the dude just poof drops. He just he knew it. He knew it. He he felt the connection of, yep, I won. And he just like kind of stares at the crowd, all pumped up and everything. It's like, dude, you're still fighting. And then all of a sudden, the dude just drops. Like he's he's a lot of fun. He's he's really good. Um, but I'm not sure about the ground game. I don't know if I've seen him on the ground. Yeah, uh, that's one thing I was kind of when I looked at that fight, I was just wondering, uh, you know, Kevin, Kevin's a dog. Kevin, he's long, uh, you know, and and he can go he can go both ways. That's the thing about his game is he can stand, stand up, up with you, you, he can get you on the ground, uh, and he's very talented. And uh, I think it's going to be a tough one for Michael Page. I like I like Kevin Holland. I, th- I think he's a great fighter. I think he's fun for the UFC. Uh, and I think he always he's just another one of those guys that he puts on a show, man. And uh, he's going to get over the he's going to get in the ring and uh, he's going to get after it. He's just going to be all over the place. He's going to constantly move forward, apply the pressure, uh, and that's what I love about his uh, style of fighting. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, 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 I think that's going to be another really fun. I mean, kind of going down the list. I don't, I won't stop on all of these, but uh, let's see. I, I wanted to back up because I know there's some early one. Uh, there for sure. Michael Pereira was one of them. I, that's. I think that's going to be a, a, an underrated fun fight to watch. Uh, and I don't. I, I, I don't know how to say the dude. He's going against Mikel, something something. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, the crazy, crazy last name to, to pronounce. Uh, I'm I'm not a professional in, in, in pronouncing names. 
but uh, another one, Curtis Blades. Uh, I, you know, is watching him fight. He's a lot of fun yeah. to watch. Uh, so that's going to be another fun one. Uh, and then let me go up here. Gilbert Burns, another fun guy to watch. Uh, and he's going against uh, Jack. Uh, let me pull it up. Della Madalena. Madalena. Uh, so I couldn't remember what his last name was. But yeah, that, that's that's a fun one. Gilbert Burns, a slight underdog in that fight too. Warrior. So that, yeah, that, that might be a fight where you take the underdog money. That might be one of those fights. His Gilbert's mentality a warrior. this whole week. Yeah, his his mentality this whole week. That's that's going to be a fun fight too. Yeah. Uh, and then of course we talked about Kevin Holland against Michael Page, Dustin Poirier uh, against ben- Benoit Saint Denis. Oh man, stacked card. Stacked. <laughs> yeah, card. it is. Dustin Poirier. Uh, he hasn't looked the same. I don't think so. I I don't know. I don't remember if we talked about this one back when it happened or not. But d- did you feel like Dustin Poirier was winning against McGregor the last time that he fought against McGregor? Before before McGregor broke his leg, did you feel like it was going towards McGregor, or did you feel like it was going towards Poirier? If you can remember, <sighs> man, that was a minute. Kind of hearing Conor a, McGregor in the UFC, that was a yeah. minute ago. Um, I don't even know if we were doing the show at that time or not. I don't think so. Um, a while ago. The second fight, I think DP was winning. Um, when Connor messed his leg up, I think you DP. Do you think he was? Yeah. The first time, the first fight, um, I can't really remember. See, the, so what I what I recall, so even the first fight, if we go back to the, I guess it would have been the second fight. So the first fight, yeah. obviously Connor knocked him out. Yeah. Uh, second time they fought. It would, kind of more recent history. Second time he fought. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the first fight was like very early in their career. Yeah, yeah, pretty early yeah. in both of them. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess early in McGregor's. Dustin, yeah. boy, Dustin's been around forever, man. Like yeah. before it was even UFC. Uh, before UFC bought out the, was it WEB? Uh, something like that. But uh, whatever that league was that he was fighting in before. But yeah, so the, the second time though, I did think it felt like McGregor was winning and then all of a sudden Poye just came back and got him you know yeah. he he just he, he got him uh, and and good finish by Poye then it was 1-1 round you know the third third time around it felt like McGregor was zoned in he was ready he was he was ready to win i felt like McGregor was winning that one mm-hmm. and then you know he so all of the reports coming in was that the doctors were trying to tell McGregor not to fight that week because he had fractures that we're, we're probably going, going, going to lead to more. And he said, they're not bothering me. I want to fight. And, and he fought through it. And he wanted to go fight. And so a lot of people don't realize that that's what went on before the fight. But yeah. that's, that's a main reason why he ended up breaking his leg. You can call it a check that, that did it. Sure, that might have been what kind of caused it to start. But that was like a round before it ever happened that, that they're talking about. And, and McGregor, McGregor threw several leg kicks after that with that leg so i i don't think that bothered him but i felt like mcgregor was winning with that being said though the reason why i bring that one up that's when i felt like poyer I, I didn't think he looked great in that that last match against mcgregor and then of course we saw this last time that he fought against gaichi yeah. it just didn't it didn't feel like dustin poyer had everything anymore it, it, right now it feels like he's kind of in that stage where i i appreciate being here and that's that's kind of the mentality that he's got i think he knows that he's gonna he's gonna have to hang it up soon well he's 36 and he 30 yeah 35 36 somewhere in that range yeah, yeah so it's getting been, time like i said he's been doing this since he was like 20 do you think I if mean, he loses tonight he hangs it up i think if he wins he might hang it up if he loses i give it a 50 50 I, I don't know it's the way that cowboy did you know like yeah. hanging it up after a loss that's gotta suck yeah, that's just got to eat at you, man. But you got to know, you got to know that you're not you on should. top of your game. You should know. Well, it, yeah. it's it's a lot like I, I wish McGregor just would have hung it up right after that cowboy fight with them. You know, like we're both going out, we're both retiring. Yeah. It's like, dude, you came back, you gave the people what they wanted. They see you go out on top. You're you're the greatest of all time. Just walk away. Yeah, but, you know, and man, yeah, it's it's tough. But Poye, uh, kind of, you know, he he wants he wants to prove that he's still. And the dude's twenty nine and eight. He's fought in thirty seven professional 
<laughs> mixed martial arts fights, dude. Dog. That's yeah. I mean, that you got to give the dude his flowers for doing what he's uh, what he's done and accomplished what he's accomplished. I feel bad for him because I don't think he's ever held a belt. Uh, not, not in the UFC. I, I don't think he's ever held a belt, and and he's been there. Now, like he's he's been on so many five rounders to get there. Like uh, man, like he's almost over the hump, and then he loses to somebody that he shouldn't lose to, and just doesn't get the chance. Yeah. Uh, and so you know, I. I, I might be wrong on that. Uh, so again, comment down below and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that he's held the belt. I don't remember it. Uh, yeah. And so, man, but Benoit Saint Denis is on a rise. Uh, the the dude's ready to to make yeah. his 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 appearance. Uh, so I mean, this is this is a tough one for me. I don't think Poirier's got it in this fight. He's is he the favorite? Um, Poirier. No, but uh, Saint Denis is the favorite. Minus two ten. I, I think that went up. Yeah, so, I mean, he's even more uh, favorite than the last time I was looking at it. Yeah, that's. I'm just not on the. I'm not on the the DP side of um, winning this fight. I think he loses this fight, and there's talks of retirement, uh, just because. Like you, like you brought up uh, the fight against Justin. Man, he did he didn't look great, and uh, he he got sent to another universe. And so, which look, Justin Justin Gaethje can send anybody to another realm, uh, far far away from this planet. So that, that dude is legit. And uh, but the age comes into consideration, and you know you just. You start losing your uh, your sharpness, and I, it's just kind of like the the Peter Yan thing, you know. So if if you lose this fight, where do you sit as a contender? And your main goal is to go for the belt, and if you lose this, you fall down the rankings, man. And it's just like it feels like at your age, you're just kind of so far away from getting back to the pinnacle. So what are we still doing it for, you know? And I think that's where we're kind of at with DP is DP's got to knock him out. Yeah, DP's yeah. got to knock him out. Like well, period. If this if the, if it goes to a decision, I'll, I'll, I'll I think yeah, DP I'll give him a submission. Moves. Yeah, I'll give him yeah. a submission or knockout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it can't go the other way. And it, I think if he wins, one hundred percent, just go out. Just yeah. just leave. Just go out, man. You're you're on top. You had a big big time main event win. Congratulations! You had an amazing career. You reached thirty wins. If you win this one, that's mm -hmm. that's crazy. Yeah, that's 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 insane. So, hats off to you, dude. Uh, just just take it out. Um, let's let's get to the main main event. Yeah, main event. That man, I've I've been waiting for this fight to come back because of how it ended. I didn't think it was fair to Sean O'Malley the way that it ended the first time. I yeah. didn't. Uh, and so it, if, a lot of people know that he broke his foot. He Before he broke his foot, uh, there was a nerve. I forget what the name of it was. There's a nerve right there in his shin that just like, uh, I, I think it separated or something. There was something yep. crazy that went on there. Terrible injury. Uh, like, man, I, I couldn't imagine. So that's why he tripped on his foot was because because he had nothing in there and he stepped forward with it and stepped on his foot weird, broke his foot. So breaking his foot wasn't wasn't the worst thing that happened in that fight. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in a lot of pain. It, it was very obvious. It sucks that it went down that way for O'Malley, but I don't like taking the victory away that so many people do, taking it away from Cheeto Vera because he's the one yeah. that did that to his leg. He's the one that did yeah. it. Uh, and, and a lot of people say, no, he broke his own foot, not the foot. The, he he broke his own foot because of something that Cheeto Vera did, and I don't like taking that away. Um, I did think that the stoppage was a little early in that one, but I think it was because the referee knew uh, yeah. you know, what was going on. And I forget who the ref was at that time. I don't. It wasn't her, uh, but you know it, he he stepped in, and I think he stepped in because he knew that like, there's something wrong with Sean's leg, and I'm about yeah. to stop it, but there's not really a reason for me to stop it because he's acting like it's not bothering him. So. I'm I'm pumped because I feel like it's unfair to both of these guys. I think it's unfair to Sean that it ended that way because it, he he wouldn't have lost that fight if he didn't 
if he didn't go down from a weird injury, just kind of a freak accident injury. Um, but I also don't like that it ended that way for Tito Vera because now Sean just sits here and, and disregards the loss and acts like he never lost. So it's 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 a, a big time a, a big time matchup in the making. Uh, it is sugar time. It's it's the sugar show. He's he's on the stage. Welcome. Uh, if if you haven't seen Sugar Sean fight in the past, you have been missing out on a lot of really good fights. Uh, a couple of duds. A couple. Not very many though. Uh, he's got a powerful right hand. Uh, and and there's there's a comparison to Conor McGregor because of the way that he trash talks, uh, and because of. So I, I saw this I saw this thing where they put, and and I hated the comparison. One hundred percent hated it. But I saw this thing where they mirror imaged uh, Sean O'Malley to where he was hitting with with his left instead of his right. The 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 the, the mechanics are uncanny on the Aljamain uh, yeah, yeah, knockout, yeah, yeah. and then to Connor uh, to, to, uh, Jose Aldo. Ho- Jose Aldo, yeah, just uncanny. Looks yeah. like the exact same dude, honestly. But it, it's it's crazy. I hate comparing them t- the two because yeah. I'm I'm a huge Connor fan. Loved Connor from the from the day he stepped in the octagon. Uh, I was I was always a huge fan back whenever it was on Fox Sports. Uh, I mean that's that's how long ago it was. Yeah, loved Connor. I'm still a Connor fan. If he comes back, 100 percent I'm buying that. But I hated hated the compar- the comparison. But it's it's there, it, and it, and you can't deny it. If you look at that, I mean, it's it's undeniable. Yeah, you ever think Connor fights again? I, if he doesn't fight this year, I don't think he's coming back. I don't think he wants Michael. I don't think he wants any part of that fight. I think he wants it. I think he wants too much money. Okay. And Dana's okay. not willing to pay him the money. That's that's what I'm thinking is why he wasn't on 300. Because I feel like there was a lot of negotiation, uh, and he didn't he didn't want it for as little as he, they were offering. And do you think he could beat Michael away. Chandler at this point in his career? Do you think he could beat Michael Chandler? I don't. I think he could. I you think, think so? I mean, the dude's jacked. I mean, Michael's, he is. Michael's a great fighter. Michael's a great fighter. I mean, they've both been away from the game for a while. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would put my money, if I had to put my money on it, which I wouldn't, because that's just such a weird fight to me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, I don't, I don't know which way because they've both been away from it for so long. I, I would put my money on Connor if I had to. Okay, but okay. That's, I mean, honestly, that's probably me being being, being biased, though. I mean, I, I love Connor. I mean, I, I well, just I just think that Connor's takedown defense he, he sprawls so fast, and then that left hand you can't you can't match yeah. it. Uh, there's I I haven't I haven't seen anyone with a one. A one punch connection, the way that Connor does. Not only that, but like stuff, stuff, weird stuff. Like I'll bring up the cowboy fight again. The way that he broke his nose with his shoulder in the clinch. That you don't see that anywhere else. He just does stuff so out of the ordinary, and he pre- he prepares for it. He knows your fight style, and he prepares for it. Uh, yeah. He's just unlike anybody. Yeah, um, hell of a fighter. One of the greats uh, to ever do it. Right. So. I, I miss him. I just miss the excitement that he brought to the sport. Uh, he was always a blast, man. He said, Sugar Sean brings some of it. I just hate him as a person, and I won't get into all that stuff, but I hate him as a person, which makes me hate that I love him as a fighter. I just, I, I hate that I love him as a fighter. Yeah, he's a big entertainer, and, uh, you know, and he knows what he possesses in that right hand, Josh. But is it going to be enough to beat Cheeto tonight? Uh, Cheeto, Cheeto ain't never been put on the mat, bro. <laughs> like, never, never. Ch- Ch- well, Cheeto and, ain't never been knocked down. And and Sean acknowledges that. I, yes, I, I love that. So Sean will sit there and talk smack on stage and in front of everybody, but in the kind of these behind the scenes interviews and stuff like that, he acknowledges it. This dude doesn't go down. He doesn't go down without a fight. Like he is a tough fighter, and I'm gonna have my hands full. But if I can get that right hand on him, because that first fight, he wasn't able to get the right hand on him. Mm-hmm. He wasn't able to. I think if he if he can connect that right hand, you're in trouble. I don't I don't care who you are. You, you I mean you're in trouble. Just like just like if you saw Connor connect with his left hand, the same thing goes goes for Sean. They're they're very similar in that way. Yeah, I think I think Sean's got to knock him out. He does. I do. He has to. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. 
we haven't seen Sean on the ground, uh, not not successfully. He's good at the defense, getting out yeah. of there. So I, I just Cheeto, I th- Cheeto can do it all. I thought he did a great job against Algermain. Uh, he did with with takedown defense and everything, which yeah, did. Algermain didn't really go that route like we thought he yeah, would. He should have, but he yeah, should've. absolutely. Uh, that and that's why he got knocked a, out. So yeah, I mean that that was such a <laughs> terrible fight by by Aljo. You know, I, I yeah. felt like Aljo should have done so much better in that fight. But man, yeah. Sean's it, it, the the thing is though, I think people know about Sean's right hand enough where it gets in their head and they, they don't want to get too close. Yep. And not only that, so uh, crazy thing, I guess with both of these guys, with Cheeto Vera and Sean O'Malley, uh, I heard Ariel, I think it was, uh, no, it wasn't Ariel, uh, it was John, John uh, Anik. He was talking their last fight about how both of them at in the bantam weight, both of them have a longer leg reach than the at the time the, the heavyweight title fighter uh the the holder uh it was um uh, crap who was it um uh, stipe uh, yeah stipe stipe uh what's dog. His last name? um oh goodness something bitch yeah I, and i don't know why I, I had it in my head too and i lost it um he don't want to see john <laughs> anymore <laughs> no I, I just you know it's yeah he doesn't he doesn't but miocic miocic yes uh, so yeah, Stipe Miocic. So they both have they Cheeto Vera and Sean have a longer leg reach in the bantam weight than a heavyweight dude. That's that's yeah. crazy to me. So that's that's one thing that a lot of people take into consideration because Sean is really good at, at using that front leg kick, that front sky. I, I think it's called a front side kick. Yeah, uh, just putting that right on your body, right in the center of your body. People know about that. They know about his reach there, and then they also don't want to get too close because he's got that right hand. So I, I think a lot of people, which Aljo is one of them, are very cautious when they fight against him for that. Yeah, um, he's talented. He's talented. And I want to see the title defense. Uh, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing for me is you won the title, which we were all expecting you to win it at some point in your career. But just because you were the next rising star and uh, and once you beat Aljo, we were like, hey, like he's the guy now, you know. Like, like a lot, of, a lot of people were picking Sean to lose that fight by submission. They thought Aljamain was going to take him down to the ground and, and submit him, and and uh, Sean got the best of him. So now we just want to see you defend the title, and we want to see you get revenge on your only loss. I know it was, you know, skeptical and all that of how you lost, and there was everything that we talked about and went through and all that good stuff. So uh, very controversial and. Yeah. You got to defend that tonight. So, one thing about it, Cheeto, he finishes people quick. I think he's got seven or eight first round finishes. Uh, like I said, never been put on the mat, never been knocked down in in his career uh, in in you know MMA, UFC. He's just a dog. He's one of those guys that just gets after it. And he continues to push forward. You watch the first fight. Go back and watch the first fight. Cheeto is constantly coming forward. If he lets Cheeto continuously come forward tonight, I think Sean's in trouble. Yeah, like I, I, agree. I, I, I think Sean has to control the octagon tonight and put Cheeto. I put his back in the corner up against the the fence because you can't let Cheeto uh, control the octagon. If you do. I think Sean runs into something that he doesn't want to see. Uh, And I think if this goes the distance, I think Sean loses. I think Sean's got to knock him out. I do. Yeah, yeah, the the style of fight uh, between the two, I don't think Sean can win in a decision. I I don't think he will win in a decision with this one. I just I don't see it happening. But you you brought up something, too, that I was going to mention, is that Cheeto Vera, like I said, a lot of people don't, don't want to ease up there, uh, get get up there close to Sean because they're watching out for that right hand. Cheeto Vera doesn't care. Yeah, he's he's gonna he's going to attack. He's going to push Sean against it. It, it this fight style between these two guys reminds me a lot. Whenever we were talking about Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis, uh, although I think Cheeto Vera is much more of a contender than Duplessis was in my mind back then. Yeah. Uh, so, and and that's no no cut down to Duplessis. I I, I yeah. love that he won. Um, and and he was he put on much more of a show than I, I expected, 
hats off to him because I didn't think he had the gas tank. A lot of us didn't think he had the gas tank. Anyways, going to this fight, very similar, where both guys are going to want the center. They're going mm-hmm. to be butting heads. They're both going to be throwing haymakers. I think somebody's going to get knocked out. Yeah. Somebody is going to get knocked out. Uh, and 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 I think they both won it. They won it. Uh, I I also said that about the Sean Strickland, uh, Drake is to Plessy. Somebody's gonna get knocked out, but the dudes took hits, both yeah. of them. So uh, you know, it could be that way again. It could be that way again. I'm extremely pumped for this matchup. I think it's gonna be yeah. a lot of fun. The Vegas favorite, Sean O'Malley minus two sixty, Cheeto Vera plus two ten. So Sean O'Malley is the Vegas favorite. The fan favorite is obviously Cheeto Vera. You're gonna hear it in the in the arena. Yeah. It is Cheeto Vera. They are going to be screaming for Cheeto. Uh, they're going to be all on his side. Uh, it was obvious in the press conferences, dude. Miami is that is an exciting venue. Uh, yeah. We were talking about uh, our family wants to get together and go to a UFC event. They didn't want to go to Vegas. I thought Vegas was a cool venue. Uh, I'm not. I'm not crazy about Vegas and the Vegas life and living up, living it up yeah. there or nothing. But I think that's a cool ve- a venue. They want. They were talking about other places. I said, all right. Well, then we got to go to Miami if it's not Vegas. We got to go to Miami because listening to that press conference, it was so loud you couldn't hear them, and they had mics, uh, and so it was it was pretty crazy. Um, but we got the the fan favorite Cheeto Vera, Vegas favorite Sean O'Malley. Who are you taking in this fight, man? Yeah, um, I've been thinking about what my decision was going to be, and I'm waiting to hear your decision first to to finally make my decision. I'm going Sean. I, like I think he catches him. Oh man, this is tough because I think it could go either way, Josh. Like yeah. Cheeto, Cheeto's that dude, and I, I think he could catch Sean. Yeah. I think he could knock Sean. And and I don't like going off that first fight just because of everything that happened. Uh, but you could see it in the first fight that they they were right in each other's face, man. Like that's I, I think you're gonna see that tonight, and. Um, I just want to go with Sean because I think he is the I think he is the next star of the UFC and I, I got to see you defend your belt. I got, if you if you were to lose it tonight, I would just be like, "Oh man, the steam. Another guy that we thought was going to be the star, the steam has just been let off and I I got to see you defend that belt." Uh so I think Sean does catch him with a right hand. I'll say I'll say if this thing gets into the fourth and fifth round, Cheeto wins it. Yeah. yeah uh, I, think Sean, I think Sean could win it in round two or three. Yeah. Round four and five is going to go to Cheeto. Yeah. Uh, so the thing with this, so Sean wants it. He wants the revenge. Cheeto wants to say, he wants to prove everybody wrong that, and no, I, I beat him. I, mm-hmm. I did. Uh, so they both have that going for him. Sean wants it uh, a lot. On, on on another hand, to defend his title, to be the the star that that you know, I, I think he looks up to McGregor a lot, which mm-hmm. every, every every young fighter should you know look up to a guy like McGregor. You know, if if you're if you're within that that weight range and stuff and like that kind of style, and that's your style, that's mm-hmm. what you should look up to, dude. Like the dude was an animal. Uh, other dudes look up to to guys like uh, like Khabib. Uh, yep. you know, th- that's their style. You should look up to those guys, but. So Sean Sean wants to live that le- he wants to put his own name out there to have his own legacy too. Cheeto's been in the UFC for ten years. Ten years. I don't think he's held a belt. Yeah. He wants that belt. That's that's the thing that makes this so much harder to to decide. Uh, and and so I mean, man, I, all week I've been thinking about this fight and I don't know how I want to to, to pick it. I, but the, I just have to go with my gut, and I'm right there with you. I think Sean wins it. I think Sean wins it late round two. I think he finally catches a clip uh, with that right hand and, and finally puts him on the ground. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't do that, it's going to go to Cheeto Vera. But uh, if I've if I've got to put my money on it, which these kind of fights are just some of them that I just usually stay away from. Uh, uh, responsible betting, everybody. Responsible yeah. betting. Uh, bet bet responsibly because uh, it's it's fun. It is. It's fun to place a little wager. But play it like you're trying to win a game. Yeah. And I don't think I can win this game. This is a tough game. I'm just going to stay out of it. Um, so it, Sean is who I would put my money on if I had to take a pick. There you uh, go. I think Sean. I think Sean wants to live that legacy. I think he wants to build a name for himself and help the UFC grow. Uh, and he's doing yeah. a great job. A lot of a lot of haters are going to say, 
if Sean wins, it was rigged. UFC wants to build build him up to be the next McGregor. They they've been looking for that next McGregor and just can't find it. He's the one that they're going to choose. I, I don't want to hear that. I, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm going to come on here and shut all that down. Dana is not about that. I I believe Dana 100. Uh, percent The dude is just he he knows how to put these matchups. He knows how to find good talent. Uh, I, I would put Dana up against uh you know uh, what's his name Dave Portnoy for for finding. Finding talent that brings in eyes. You, you don't have to like them. You don't have to like Dave or Dana. They they bring in the show. I mean, a lot like Jake Paul. You know, he, he brings true. in a show. He brings in a show. And so uh, this is going to be a really fun one, man. I'm extremely pumped. Uh, going to go out there to the Sasquatch mm-hmm. Cave and watch it with the fam. Uh, Love that. Go down there and and uh, you know watch watch USC two ninety nine. We talked about this this fight night a lot more than I anticipated. I thought this was going to be like a 20, 30 minute episode. So <laughs> sorry to everybody that you had to sit here and listen to us ramble. Uh, we even jumped around a lot too. Yeah. But there's so much going on in USC two ninety nine. Extremely fun, uh, extremely exciting. Uh, so make sure to tune in. Uh, we thank everybody for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, so, you know, we, we thank everybody for all of the love, all of the support. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, and then also click that link down below. We've, we, you can also join the channel, become a member today and help support us uh, and, and kind of uh, fund the podcast a little more. And we want to give back to our listeners by giving you all kinds of behind the scenes kind of stuff and, uh, you know, do some exclusive content just for members. We're going to do some exclusive uh, live streams and stuff like that just for members uh, and then we're also going to give that back to you guys by doing some some kind of giveaways and stuff like that as soon as we build up that that uh, membership program too so we want you guys to help support us there uh, you can also follow us on social media all over the place you can find us on facebook instagram uh and and x formerly known as twitter i still want to call it twitter so um, cool. but you guys I can did. check us out on there follow us uh and and show us some love over there we thank everybody so much for all of your love all of your support We'll catch you on the next one.